Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you for tuning back in. I'm David Mathis. I appreciate you guys checking out my channel. Um, all the comments, all the uh, people reaching out to me from the past content that I've been producing, it really means a lot. If you guys are liking the content, please like, subscribe, and share. Make sure you hit that little notification button because I am putting out regular content. Today I want to start a two-part series all about how you find your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, and how you can use that to determine what your maintenance calories are, whether or not you're trying to go into a fat loss diet or maybe you're trying to go into a surplus um, in order to put on some more muscle. It's important to know what your BMR is. But first, what is BMR? BMR is your basal metabolic rate. It's basically what the amount of calories it takes for your body to just survive, for your heart to beat, for your blood to pump, all your organs to work, that's the minimum amount of calories that you need to take in a day just to maintain proper bodily functions, right? There's a lot of equations out there. There's a lot of formulas that you can use to try to figure it out. Really, these come down to the fact that they're just equations. Nothing is perfect. What I want to show you today is what we use and what we feel is the most beneficial, the most accurate BMR equation um, to try to figure that out for you and that is the Mueller equation. So as you can see here on a nice little whiteboard, the Mueller equation takes into account your age, your lean body mass, your fat mass, and your gender. Now, one thing that's important to remember when you're going through this equation is that you want to make sure that your measurements are in kilograms, not pounds. You put it in through pounds, you're gonna find that your BMR is very high, and if you try to start eating at that, you're probably gonna gain a lot of fat real quick. So I just wanna walk through a little bit about um, the equation and what you can kind of expect at the end. So the equation starts with 13.587 times your lean body mass, okay? Now how do you find your lean body mass? Well, you first have to know what percentage body fat you are, and you can do that by calipers, DEXA, InBody, whatever you guys use, make sure you stay consistent with that method, okay? Um, because none of them are 100% accurate. But what you're gonna see is if you stick with the same method of measuring your body fat, you're gonna be able to tell if you're going down or if you're going up. So it's really important to keep that into consideration. So you're gonna do 13.587 times your lean body mass in kilograms. Now I've kinda come up with an example here to show you how this calculation works out. The example we're using is a 34-year-old male who has a lean body mass of 65.90 kilograms. Okay, that roughly works out to about 145 pounds. Their fat mass is 6.81 kilograms, which roughly works out to about 15 pounds of fat. So that is the example that we're gonna be using in this equation to kind of help show you how this works. So you plug in the 13.587 times the 65.90 kilograms, and that's gonna get you 895.38, okay? You're then going to add that to 9.613 times your fat mass in kilograms, okay? So the fat mass in kilograms is 6.81, and that gives us 65.46. Okay, so then you are going to subtract, I'm sorry, then you are going to add 198 times your sex. Now, I put up here as a guide, if you're a male, you're going to put 1. If you're a female, you're going to put 0, okay? So this would be, for this particular example, a male, it would be 198 times 1, which is 198, as you can see down here. So then you are going to subtract that from 3.351 times whatever age you are. This example, it's a 34-year-old person, so they're gonna do that times 34, and they're gonna get 113. Now, finally, the last step is, no matter what, you are gonna add 674 to that equation. So, when you go through and you do proper mathematics, and do things in the parentheses first, add them up, subtract, add all that up. This example comes to 1,719.84 calories as a BMR. And I'm just gonna sit here and tell you that that is pretty accurate, okay? 
This example is for me in particular, and I've actually had my in-body done, I've had my BMR done, um, and it's very, very similar to the number that I got there. The most similar that I've gotten from any other equation I've tried, um, like Harris Benedict and others. So um, that is what we use, that is what I use as an evidence-based coach to help try to figure out um, what my client's BMR is if they don't happen to know it already. And from there, we're gonna go into part two of the video, so stay tuned for that. That's why it's important to hit that notification button and like, subscribe, and share. Because then I'm gonna take the BMR that we know, okay, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna tell you how to use some other aspects of formulas to try to figure out what your maintenance calories are. Because like I said before, you need to know your BMR so that we can find your maintenance calories. That way, whatever goal you're going into, fat loss, reverse diet, surplus, maintenance, we have an accurate assessment of your individual metabolic rate. It doesn't matter, you can take someone who is your same height, your same weight, your same body fat, all this stuff, they are going to have a different BMR and maintenance calories than you are because of what I'm gonna talk about in part two of this video, which is your activity level and your metabolic factor. So stay tuned for that, that's coming up soon. In honor of 4th of July, I've got my American flag shirt on. I'm a proud Army veteran. I was a combat medic for four years. Um, so y'all, I hope you're having a good, safe 4th of July, enjoying it with family and friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit more about BMR. Um, stay tuned for more on how to figure out your maintenance calories based on your activity level and your metabolic factor. I'll be seeing you guys soon. Take care.